After 16 hours of negotiations, leaders from Ukraine and Russia reach a deal, a ceasefire set to go into effect on Sunday. Will this one hold? Good morning. Welcome to Happening Now. I'm John Scott. Hi, everybody. I'm Jenna Lee. We're a few days away from Sunday, so we'll see what actually takes place. This fragile truce reached after talks went very late into the night last night. Even during the negotiations, pro-Russian rebels launched some of the war's most intense fighting. Of course, this isn't the first ceasefire between the two sides, but German and French leaders who brokered the deal insist that they're going to keep it on track. In the meantime, the International Monetary Fund, or IMF, injecting billions of dollars to rebuild Ukraine's economy. Let's get more from our senior foreign affairs correspondent, Greg Palcott, who's live in Kiev. Greg? Jenna, a glimmer of hope. That is what one participant has said about this deal, but maybe just a glimmer. The folks here on the ground in Kiev are skeptical. They have been here before. Those marathon talks produced at least two very important points. You alluded to one. That's the ceasefire set for midnight Saturday night. It is described as unconditional. And another important point, the withdrawal, the pulling back of heavy weapons like tanks and rockets that have done so much damage, that have caused so many deaths in the eastern part of this country. That damage continuing as we speak, especially over a key rail hub where both sides have been fighting. This is another hitch. They have another three days before the ceasefire is supposed to go into effect. They can fight during these, the, these three days, and there hasn't been a dividing line set between the two sides yet. Now, as for a very important point, and that is Russian presence in eastern Ukraine. There were a couple of points hinting towards dealing with that situation. One, they called for a, a pullout out of foreign troops and two they said the ukrainian military should take over the border between ukraine and russia but there were so many clauses and and, and vague wordings and and uh, long timelines there that frankly the russians could march around this remember Vladimir Putin says there are no Russian troops, no tanks here in eastern Ukraine. But today, the Ukrainian government saying that in the last 24 hours, 50 tanks crossed the border. A top American contact told me today he thinks there's about six to 8,000 troops. All of these conditions, uh, Jenna, probably leading Washington to take a, a wait-and-see attitude towards this, towards this truce, this ceasefire. And if it goes down, maybe reviving the idea of that lethal defense weaponry that was talked about being sent here. And yes, one last point, IMF, International Monetary Fund, approving a $17.5 billion package. The economy is in as bad shape here as the eastern part of this country. Back to you. A lot of big news there for us. Our top story of the day. Greg, thank you very much. ISIS is making new claims about, the, about France's most wanted woman, Hayat Boumdien. The Islamic State's French language magazine publishing a story saying the widow of one of the Paris gunmen in the Charlie Hebdo attack is currently in the militant group's territory. John Huddy, live in our Mideast Bureau with the latest on these claims. John. Yeah, well, John, this is the uh, really the first official claim that Boumdien, as you mentioned, is in ISIS territory and has joined the terror group, has linked up with ISIS. Now, the interview uh, is in a magazine called Dar al-Islam. It's a Q&A supposedly with Boumdien. I say supposedly because there are no pictures of her or really any proof or definitive evidence that it is in fact her, though it is believed that she did manage to cross the Turkish border into terror, uh, into uh, Syria and joined up, in fact, with ISIS. And that raises concerns about militants getting into Iraq and Syria to fight with ISIS. In fact, yesterday we learned that ISIS is growing with more than 20,000 militants from more than 90 countries, uh, many of them so-called homegrown terrorists, those, uh, those militants radicalized in other countries, including the United States and France. Now, Boumdien and her husband, uh, Kou, uh, Amdi Koulalbe, uh, killed, he killed five people in that kosher supermarket attack in Paris last month, and both say they were inspired, in fact, by ISIS. And in this supposed interview, uh, Boumdian says she did not find it difficult uh, reaching ISIS territory and getting across the Turkish border into Syria, and says uh, that she felt good to quote unquote be on ISIS soil. Uh, she doesn't really provide any details about the attacks in Paris, uh, but does say that her husband uh, also wanted to join ISIS and get into uh, Syria and Iraq to fight with the terror group as well. Back to the magazine, John, it shows pictures of the aftermath of the, uh, the attacks in Paris and it's entitled, May Allah Curse France. 
John. Mm -hmm. And John Huddy in uh, joining us now from our Meetings Bureau. Thank you, John.